I guess I'm here to, uh, to provide historic perspective. Yeah, Ronald Feldman and I were talking about this sort of comes up every 20 years or whatever it is, and I can't imagine I'm here again. Um, <laughs> but here I am. You know, I was thinking about what I was going to say, and I, have, I did not see this exhibition. So I can't really comment very much about this exhibition, but I can comment on where I was in an exhibition 20 years ago and how it's impacted me and how I think it's impacted the museum and art world since then. Back in October, I was giving a talk to museum directors. There were about 300 of them. And I, it was uh, in the Midwest. And um, I flippantly titled it the talk, Sex, Drugs, and Museum Management. <laughs> and, and I don't even know why I was saying, decided to do that. I was just being a jerk, I think, quite honestly. But I started to talk about taking risks, you know, and what happens when you take risks when you do museums and which is very much a part of our world, not just art museums, but all museums. And so I thought, well, I'll talk about the Maplethorpe controversy. And I began to look at the slides of the Maplethorpe show again for a group of museum directors. And I found myself censoring myself, okay? I found myself, well, I can't show that. Here I am in 2011, the, the work that I showed in 1990, I'm a little queasy or a little uncertain about showing it. And um, so just for a moment, can we just throw these on and just go quickly through them? This is not Maplethorpe, but that is Maplethorpe, in case you've forgotten. That is Maplethorpe. That's Maplethorpe. Maplethorpe. Again. A again. Again. And that is not Maplethorpe. That's, that's me and my lawyer. Uh, um, but. You know, I looked at those images. They are very confrontational images 20 years later. They really, really, really are. Any, they're more confrontational than anything I saw in the, in the short clip on David's film. And they're very powerful images. And, but I found myself, I, in the end, I showed some of them, but I did not show all of them. So it's an interesting moment for me. And then I thought about the whole thing of playing it safe. Okay, and, and I felt in the wake of the Maplethorpe controversy, that museums played it safe for a long, long time, and I'm thinking mostly now about art museums, that they really decided, okay, we won that battle, but we really lost the war. Okay, we lost the war because Dennis Berry and the Contemporary Art Center and the other institutions, the, the Corcoran, we suffered terribly. We lost all of our financial support. Uh, you know, we went, I went to, tr I spent a year and a half in courtrooms uh, and, and in the end decided to leave, actually decided to leave the art world because it was just such a contentious time. And you think about, you think about that a lot. And I always thought, well, my career is over because art museums are always going to say, I'm not going to hire somebody who's going to lead me down this path, or I'm not going to be, uh, this is not my ego speaking, I'm not going to be Dennis Berry. I'm not going to get in this trouble again. And little by little, I think, you know, we thought we would play it safe, the art museum world, the art world, and then things would pop up every, every now and then, like the Sensations exhibit in Brooklyn. And, you know, Rudy Giuliani would rush to the rescue to condemn that work. And, but not very much, because, and we kind of wonder when, you know, we kind of think, well, this isn't really going to happen to us very much anymore. I have to say, I was shocked that it happened at the Portrait Gallery at the Smithsonian. And that's one of the lessons here. That's a big lesson about, you know, I'm amazed they did the show more than anything else. I'm amazed, not that they censored certain work out of the show. I'm amazed they did the show. I, I kind of said to myself, what are they thinking? This is the portrait gallery. This is the Smithsonian. I have to tell you, they do not take risks. I worked for them for 11 years. You know, I mean, they do pictures of Lassie. You know, uh, <laughs> clean pictures of Lassie. I mean, I mean seriously. So the fact that they did hide and seek to me was really kind of remarkable. And the fact that they wound up having to do, to censor the show, or at least to react to it, was not remarkable. Not remarkable at all. Because as Norman said, this, con this is a continuum. It's been in our society for a long, long time. It will be in our society for a long, long time to come. And we tend to hide. We tend to hide, like the, you know, the, the term hide and seek from these issues until something like hits us in the head again. Um, 
we tend to forget that we have to always be on guard and that we have to be political and we have to act for our beliefs. And museum people quite often don't because they fear, they fear the consequences. And the consequences are almost always funding. Okay? And that's what the consequence is here right now. The consequence is, as, as, as John Boehner from the state of Ohio, and I live in Ohio, John, we like to call him John Boner, but, um, he, but you know, the consequence that all the funding will be cut off from the Smithsonian, that the NEA will be defunded, that's the real battle, okay, that any voices that speak in a tone other than a certain point of view will be defunded, and this comes out, and so we sit there silently, and I thought, despite Blake's columns and other things, I thought the museum was, rem excuse me, the museum world and the art world was remarkably silent about the issue in Washington. And I still think it's remarkably silent. I'm thrilled that Michael and others have finally kind of taken up this, this, the gauntlet a little bit to say, okay, wait, this is a very big issue and we're not doing enough. And I've, a, a moment of irony, uh, on, in Saturday's New York Times, and I'm going to pronounce his name wrong. Ai Weiwei? Ai Weiwei. Right. Thank you. My Chinese is very bad. <laughs> but I thought there was a little article, Museum Issue Petition for Artist Release, mm -hmm. okay? So the artist, artist Ai Weiwei, who's been imprisoned in China, and he's got, there's been um, a lot of activity from the Museum of Modern Art, Los Angeles County Museum, Muse Museum Institute of Art, Tate in London, uh, American Association of Art Museum Directors, of which I was a member at one time, about freeing this man from prison in China. And the quote I like to quote here is, we members of the international arts community express our concern for Ai's freedom and disappointment in China, reluct China's reluctance to live up to its promise to nurture creativity and independent thought, the keys to soft power and cultural influence. Well, why don't we write that here? And why we don't write it here is because there's a political consequence there's really a political economic consequence to writing that here and to making that protest here. And I don't blame my brothers and sisters in the museum world. It's very scary when you're, you're confronted with no money, you know, when you're confronted with the lack of federal support or state support, or in the case of New York, when Rudy was, uh, was mayor, of, of city support, like in Brooklyn and other places. I mean, this is a big, big issue, and yet, so we remain relatively silent because there's a consequence here to speaking out. And so, it, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to chastise. I love the museum world, I love the art world, but I know that we are not doing what we need to do, and that is to, to, to make a stand. These issues will never go away. They'll, they'll always be part of some continuing dialogue. Dialogue's a good word, because it's not usually a dialogue, but a lot of shouting between these forces. I also thought it was very interesting how naive we are to think that because um, pres you know, Obama is president, that these issues would go away, that somehow under a George Bush or someone else, these would be the issues of our time. Well, you know, we live we live in a totally divided country and a totally divided government. So here you got, whether Obama wants to say anything about this or not say anything about this, he's got a Congress where they're divided on every issue. I mean, abortion rights came back into the, into the battle over the, um, over the budget. So, I, you know, I, I don't have any simple answers. I mean, I, I, I found myself kind of like, here I am again, I, I sort of, like I said, I, I kind of got myself out of, the, out of the art world to do museums where I thought there wouldn't be any controversy, such as the Mob Museum, uh, uh, where you kind of know who you're dealing with, folks, you know? Uh, but, uh, and no federal funding. And, um, but um, not to go on, but I, 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 am, I am very glad for these forums, and I'm very glad for kind of an awakening again of thinking about these issues because they will they will be with us and you can't be silent and I don't know what our voices would do because I look at this room and I'm sure we're pe preaching to the choir but I guess we need to again to preach and again to write a letter like this mm -hmm. about what's happened in Washington not what's happening in Beijing that's my comment Thank you.